How's it going guys? My name is Andreas and today I'm going to be talking about PokerStars rake changes and what it means for Micro 6 players and how it really affects the games. Let's have a look at a couple of examples here. Now, you can see that maybe if your favorite tournament is a $1 buy-in, that when you go to the structure over here and again scroll down, you can see that not $1 goes into the prize pool, but now after the 26th of uh, March in 2018, uh, 89 98 cents go into the prize pool and 12 cents are retained by PokerStars. Now that is more or less a rake uh, increase by 20% and you know that basically affects every tournament up to a $20 buy-in. So um, you know these are the rake changes effective of, as of March 26th. Now they did a little bit something tricky and to make basically amends for increasing the rake. They said okay we got this time tournament and um, we have cut the rake there. Let's have a look at it here. And yes, we can see it. Only five cents are retained by poker stars instead of 10 cents initially by time tournaments. So time tournaments are gonna be become softer. But seriously, who plays time tournaments? This is basically the most unpopular format on poker stars for years now. There's just a couple of people, and if you're one of them, maybe you're happy with the rake changes and you know you can now play this format more profitably because it takes 45 uh, down to 15 minutes and you know it's gonna help you a little bit so if you want to see that a little bit more clearly if the time tournament is one dollar it helps you a little bit and if it's a bit a little bit longer tournament for example 45 minutes then it's seven cents per one dollars and tens so you get your two cents back there but most importantly, when the tournament is $10 or $20 buy-in, you lose a bunch. Now, I've actually created this Excel um, calculation here, and you can see that I have three um, types of players. First player, he's a marginal winner. He has 900 in buy-ins, he has $1,000 in cashes, and he has a profit of $100. Now, after the profit, uh, uh, profit after changes is going to be 20 less since rake has been increased. And now he basically, the loss in percent is he loses 20% of his profits uh, if he's that type of player. And to be honest, these are going to be lots of players. You know, if you're maybe even a little bit lucky over some small sample of tournaments, maybe you're winning a little bit. Now the loss after rake is pretty high. Maybe you're a bit a higher winner. And you know you win 200s on an eight dollar dollar buy-in, so you make a thousand cash it's just for buying for 800. So you're a bit better than the uh, first player here. And then your loss in percent is only 10 percent. And now we come to the third player who is a crusher at the micros. He only buys in for 500. Maybe it's just a run good guy. Now he has a thousand dollars cash. He's 500 in profit. Now after the changes, he still has 480 dollars. He only loses 20 dollars due to rake changes. So. If you're player number three, this rake change doesn't do much for you. But, you know, let's be honest, there's a lot of players out there that just don't want to, you know, wanna, you know win a little bit playing poker as a hobby and not lose too much money and if you're a marginal winner at the game may that be because of your skill or because you just ran well over the last thousand, last thousand tournaments, it doesn't really matter at all but you're gonna lose a lot of percent to the po stars poker uh, to the side poker stars because they take so much more rake from you um, relative to before. So unless you're really crushing the micro stakes and you're just way better than everyone else on, on, on these limits, then these changes are actually quite severe. You know, 10, 20% of your profits gone down. It's not really something um, you know to laugh at and when you compare though these changes to uh, rake back changes that came before there obviously those numbers were quite higher you know it could have been up to 80 90 percent of your profits gone that's why so many people left poker stars um, as a site or so many grinders because they didn't get those rake back um, numbers anymore of supernova elite or supernova uh, they might have just found games elsewhere on poker apps and, and just party poker and other um, bigger sites and then obviously some yeah shady sites that you know almost nobody knows about um, so this has been the development and I think this recent changes will not affect things that severely but just for a couple of people who you know just try to make and build a bank hole it's going to be much tougher because ROIs these days are not as high anymore so if you're in that 10-20% region of ROI you just lose a lot to the new rake structure and since you're also not getting a lot of rake back as a micro stakes player 
you're not really getting anything out of the changes and I don't see like how your security or any other benefits might go up. The fields are not going to be solved. It is probably just the same people playing it. And as a lot of people mentioned, uh, maybe that they're, um, you know, these rate changes, a lot of players won't even notice this. I would say that 80%, they haven't heard about it. It wasn't announced. It wasn't the proper way of doing things. Um, at least Pokestars could have had the decency to tell the players what, what, what is up and you know how much they're charging at the moment. Sure, if you're interested, you can look, but as soon as there's some changes, you really wanna make it totally clear to all the players what's up. And by just changing that headline in the first sense that you know you just see like the buy-in and nothing else, and then putting it in the structure, that is quite an underhand uh, thing, uh, way to do things and is really not reputable for a big company like poker sauce and that's really the biggest issue you know they can raise the prices in my opinion it's just the way it is but um it's just you know an underhand way of just doing it in such a you know uh disguised way basically and there's like something to talk about and that's daniel negrano and you know he's just in poker right now the biggest hypocrite out there he has made all his money or almost all his money with poker this was his industry for the last decades and now he's basically saying that it's okay to take that opportunity away from you guys out there who have the dream of making money playing poker or it's just become so much less likely that you're going to succeed at it with you know so many um small changes that just add up over time so you know i don't get where it's coming from like he doesn't really need the money that he's i i cannot imagine that he needs the money that he's being paid by poker stars if it's like like 1 million, 2 million a year. I don't have an idea how much he's earning exactly or if it's more. I don't want to have a number in my head now, but you know, he probably doesn't need the money. And at the same time, he he just always like, even if you listen to him at Poker After Dark, mentioning time tournaments and that they actually cut Rake for like a format that less than 1% of people enjoy. Um, it's just a joke and like, he could at least admit that, you know, sure it's gonna get tougher for people and just have some retalk. He doesn't have to criticize the company. He just has to be a real person and not, you know, talk so much shit about what's actually happening. It's quite clear PokerStars tries to maximize their winnings here. Um, there's no reason to think otherwise of it. And, you know, players have to basically stand up for themselves and give some other um, companies a chance in order to become a competitor to Pokestars. And that's really my tip for you guys. If you think this is ridiculous and you know, these changes will come and, uh, again and again, I, and I can see it in 2019, we're gonna have the next step and there's gonna be more and more cuts that are gonna change the game quite a bit. I think the cash games are probably gonna be again a target by poker stars because they wanna move over people to um, tournaments more exactly KO tournaments where people distribute the money among each other and the money basically stays always in the player pool and that big winners don't get the money off the side because that's actually where PokerStars loses the most money to. Big winners cost the company the most. Um, they're gonna, you know, cash out the money in the end. They're not gonna redeposit it or reinvest their winnings again. And, you know, that's why they have to make it in a way that, you know, everyone's basically playing with their money against each other and just the money flows around and in the end, like almost 100% goes to poker stars. That's really the end goal. And yeah, you will see what the next changes are gonna be. So my tip is give some other, you know, companies out there a shot. Um, I also appreciate that like Party Poker has now new software. It's really more pleasant to play on its side. Now there's a couple of things that I still don't like nearly as much. PokerStars is still my favorite side in playing experience. And I hope that, you know, some other competitors will just try to battle that and, you know, make the software even better so that they can compete realistically with the biggest side for the moment. So if you enjoyed this video, hit those uh, like buttons down there and subscribe to the channel. There will be more coming for different to poker topics and I'm gonna continue my bankroll challenge also here and you will see the next video with the bankroll challenge day number 10. I am trying at the moment to run $24 to $1,000 um, on micro stakes. It's not gonna become easier now after these rig changes, but I'm trying my best. I'm on day 10 and I on day 11 now and you will see the summary of the last day here on YouTube. Thanks for watching today and see you for the next one.